When I was a kid, I, like everyone else, watched the Indiana Jones movie that was set here and was absolutely amazed at the beauty of this place, but just assumed it was created specially for the movie. It was only when I was around 20 years old when I learned that this place is actually real, and since then it has been a dream of mine to visit. But even after all the planning we did before coming here, we couldn't have imagined how gorgeous this place truly is until we seen it for ourselves. We spent four hectic days here and this is what Jordan had in store for us. Welcome to Planet Mars. You know what a cell care term means? It means there's nobody there to help you if you're drowning. <laughs> morning from Jordan. We had a very difficult night. I got through customs no problem and then we had a bit of a problem with Ashes. They wanted to examine her and we had to go into this little interview room and stuff but long story short we're here. We ended up staying in the wrong hotel by accident. <laughs> we, just, but, uh, we just came into the hotel. Nobody's there. I'm like okay here's the room. Let's stay there. <laughs> because we had no choice. It was four o'clock in the morning because we were taking our car and driving. Because I was driving. I hadn't driven in around six seven years and now I'm mean, driving in Jordan it's like that's what you do for a great experience we're on the way to the Dead Sea we're actually on a road called Dead Sea Road it's already quite obvious that a rental car is the best way to get around this place we rented from a company called Auto Nation and we got our little Nissan Sunny I think it's called for about three hundred dollars for five days with insurance. So, with insurance yeah so we think it's pretty reasonable Considering Jordan is probably a little bit of an expensive country, so taxis and buses might not be the best option. And when you have your own car, you've got your own sense of liberty, so it's lovely just being able to throw everything in the back seat and relax. We don't have a credit card, just debit, so we read online that a lot of places only accept credit cards, but this one we just paid our $300 car rental fee plus a $700 cash deposit that we'll get back on Saturday when we go to leave the car back. They picked us up at the airport and they're going to drop us back at the airport on Saturday, so yeah, couldn't be happier at the minute. Instead of going to one of those fancy resorts and using their beach for about $40, we parked at a random place along the road and went for a swim. The Dead Sea is the lowest point on Earth and is called the Dead Sea because the water is too salty. It feels like I just stepped in a bath, it's so hot. Nothing but bacteria can survive in these conditions and it really makes your swimming experience a little bit special. Sensation is so, so weird. You don't have any choice but to float like this. You can't, it's harder to put your legs down than it is to... <laughs> Look, see my legs are already gone up. It's simply because a person's body weight is lighter than the density of salt water. So the Dead Sea is what, nine times saltier than your average sea or ocean? I didn't realize how much of a difference it would make. Obviously I've seen videos and stuff, but I always think people are exaggerating on YouTube. But this is mad, like I can't float and here I am. You definitely don't expect to come to the Dead Sea and just have a little area to yourself and we just parked the car up there and the guy said five Jordanian dinner he said we're gonna have tea and coffee showers and look at this we're the only two people here we had Wadi Mujib which is a cool uh, natural canyon water park and I'm excited <laughs> This should be sick. I had to buy the shoes and wearing a blank with safety first. <laughs> the most fun thing that it's a self-guided tour, so we just can take our time. You can spend there two, three hours, five hours. You know, you know what a self-guided tour means? It means there's nobody there to help you if you're drowning. <laughs> <laughs> So I was standing the video and the fish started biting me. Wadi Mujib is a spectacular place to visit, but the best thing about it is that you can do a lot of climbing and sliding from this natural slice. You are cool, like I've never tried anything like this. Which is very adventurous. And then the battery died on my GoPro. We are delighted at Wadi Mujib because we weren't sure whether or not we were going to go. And then we went and we just can't imagine not to went. So and it is an absolute 10 out of 10 must do if you come to Jordan. After getting our exercise for the day at Wadi Mujib, we spent a few hours driving down the country towards Wadi Musa, the city beside Petra. It was a long drive through the desert mountains, but we couldn't complain as the views were absolutely stunning along the way. We 
we woke up very early to see the most iconic tourist attraction in Jordan. Petra opens at 6.30 and the ticket is very pricey, $70, but it's included along the visa fee and other attractions in Jordan if you buy the Jordan Pass. There seem to be quite a few people at the ticket office, but I think it was just mainly one big tour group. So now we kind of have a free trail to ourselves. First you have to walk about 30 minutes through the stunning narrow canyon before you see the magnificent El Kazne. It's a massive building, 39 meters high, which is as tall as a 12-story building. The workers had to climb up to be able to build it from top to bottom, so they built steps, which are still preserved nowadays. You can use them to climb up to the spectacular view of the treasury. Not for free though, but the local Bedouin people not only take the great pictures, but offer you a cup of their tea. Hello, my name is Rashid, I am from Petra. Uh, nice to meet you. Petra is actually not only the treasury, but a massive city built by Nabataeans in the center of the most important trading routes. And in Petra, Nabataeans were trading with Greeks, Romans and Persians. It used to be a very rich city, an oasis in the middle of a desert for caravans. There is even a theater with 4,000 seats. The fact that you can now walk wherever you want to, nobody controls you. You can go up here, down there, that's amazing. And there are no people really here and now we are here in this massive place on our own. Unfortunately, an earthquake occurred and there are only a couple of buildings carved in the wall left. After it was destroyed, the world forgot about it and only local Bedouin nomads knew about it. They settled into ancient palaces and tombs. Then, in 1985, government decided to make a tourist attraction out of it. And now, Bedouins make money on tourists and some of them move to Wadi Musa. So along the trail we bumped into two little kids uh, and they were selling colorful rocks, so we were too soft-hearted not to buy them off them. So cute. But we are not taking them again. But this one is probably too heavy for a suitcase. This one, maybe. A unique water supply system is still preserved here. These are actually water pipes. Uh, they used to collect uh, rainwater here and distribute like this. In natural ceramic pipes across the city of Petra. And we're keeping it underground during hot months. These are actually tombs, which are quite simple, but have quite an iconic design for Nabataeans. But none of the other buildings in Petra have the perfection of the treasury. It took quite a while for archeologists to understand why Nabataeans built this building 2,000 years ago. There are a lot of statues of animals and gods they took from Greek and Roman, but they all are associated with death. That's why historians think that they used to sacrifice animals there. But the actual tombs are not inside, but underneath, with the body of the king and his family covered in sand for many, many years before being discovered. That is now hidden from tourists for obvious reasons. It's also a good idea to come early because, well, number one, you can get better pictures and number two now it's 20 past 10 and the sun is baking. We were a way down past the treasure so we didn't realize how busy it was here but this is why you come at half six and not half ten. It's mobbed here. Now. We thought it was a little bit busy this morning at half six but now it's just crazy. We are absolutely exhausted that was a long hike. Whew. We need to get some food it's 11. So we kind of passed out after lunch and we were just lying in bed because 14,000 steps in the morning isn't easy. And now we are heading for dinner and this is the view. So we're at a restaurant here, actually quite a nice restaurant with a nice view of Petra and just something that we thought of having lived in China for five years, especially our city, the level of English there was pretty much non-existent um, in restaurants and places like this. Even in Turkey, some places do, some places don't, but in Jordan, since we've came here a few days ago, everybody speaks really good English, so it might be a reservation you would have about coming here, the language barrier, but even at little corner shops and supermarkets, everybody's just so welcoming in English, and it's, it's great. So in Jordan and Turkey, actually, they serve everything with bread, so we just ordered our food, and then they brought over this basket with hummus on the house. The portion sizes in Jordan have been ridiculous. Like here we have two portions of rice, huge portion of stew, big massive bit of lamb and that, and they give us some free bread, hummus, 
I've never seen portion sizes like it. It's getting expensive, but still. So in Jordan, they are very kind and you can't say no to food and they offer it all the time. So this is a dessert in this place and... Wow. Is the coconut in syrup or honey? So good. If you think visiting Petra will be the highlights of a trip to Jordan, think again. Because the next place we went to completely blew our minds. Welcome to Planet Mars. Today we are staying in a dome in the desert and come and have a look. So we were lucky to have the dome on the first line so we are facing this amazing view here. Actually I didn't expect to have such an amazing facilities here. We have an AC so it's not hot. We have a bathroom and come here have a look at this. And this is the best part of it. As the sun was going down, we set off on our jeep tour through the Wadi Rum Desert. What's your name? My name is Joad. Joad, nice to meet you. Me too. I hope you're a good driver. Yeah, I hope. <laughs> there are three types of tours, all of different lengths. We chose the two hour jeep tour and according to the plan, we were supposed to visit four different locations before arriving at a place to watch the sunset. Like it actually doesn't even look real. It's only a hundred meters away, but it looks like it's, it looks like I'm driving into like a postcard or something. The itinerary depends on the location of your camp. Sunset is quite a popular time for desert tours though, so some locations can get quite crowded. But if you talk to your driver, you can adjust the tour to your liking. We went to some beautiful scenic spots instead of staying at the face-shaped rock. He said the Bedouin give this uh, rock face a special name and they said they call him Donald Trump. Or spending time looking at ancient Nabataean drawings that helped them navigate back in the day. The coolest place on our tour was the location where Ridley Scott's movie The Martian was shot. This is the exact rock that Matt Damon sat on in The Martian. Well, the people in Hollywood definitely know best about choosing the perfect location to shoot their movies. By the way, they started building these dome hotels after the movie. What adventure? so many directors decided to shoot the movies such as uh, Star Wars, Aladdin, Dune, Martian of course in this place because it's truly incredible it looks like Mark mentioned before like another planet even though it's so popular so famous it's crowded but because it's huge you can find a lot of places to escape the crowds and just enjoy the nature and the nature is fantastic it's a must if you come to Jordan after arriving back to our dome we spent some time resting and talking about our thoughts on Jordan what a unique and stunning country so after that big adventure we were invited to this place for dinner and it already we just got here and it looks like it's going to be an amazing experience once again so uh, he said they're going to cook dinner underground i'm not sure what that means but i guess we're going to find out soon there's this round thing that everybody's going to sit around the fire and there's music being played and it's going to be a great atmosphere so i can't wait a little bit of a funny moment just now they came and said okay everyone now let's go to have a look at the food <laughs> and everyone just for standing there right. so we just look at the it's food we don't eat it at the moment and uh, then we went there and they basically put um, food in a metal pot and then uh, dig it in into the ground and cover it with coal and stuff like that and then it cooks over hours maybe five or six hours and now we're going to try it I didn't were too hungry to record much about the food, but it was exceptional. One of the best dinner experiences we've ever tried. I think Badiram was a uh, highlight of our trip so far and that was unbelievable. Yeah, we're leaving now and I don't really want to leave to be honest, but uh, yeah, we have to make our way back to Amman tonight for our flight tomorrow. But. If you're coming to Jordan, do not leave Wadi Rum off your list and especially these bubble places because this has just been 24 hours of paradise. We would recommend you to stay here in Orbit Camp and I think food, this 
dinner we had, it was one of the best we ever had, so highly recommend. It's actually located in a very good place because we were passing out of bubble uh, places and it's like uh, facing the rocks or facing each other, but here I think it's really great. Top notch. My name's Salah, uh, welcome to Wadi Ram, welcome to Orbit Camp. We were prepared to spend the whole day driving up the country towards Amman, but we took the desert highway and actually arrived to Amman in another four hours. The city center is, is a very atmospheric place where you can feel the mix of Middle Eastern culture and also Roman culture as well as of ruins from the Roman Empire. Jordan is a Muslim country and they are not too strict to the tourists but I think we still need to respect their traditions so I, I think you might see me on the videos in this quite a lot and just try to cover my shoulders a little bit, my legs. The food of this region, like Turkey, Arabian countries, is not similar but quite similar. They have the uh, same dishes such as shawarma, kebab and stuff like that. Today we tried Jordanian kebab and shawarma and I was so impressed. I like the flavor so much. I think the difference is that they use a little bit different spices and herbs which gives you a different flavor and that was amazing. Highly recommend you. We just uh, stepped upon this uh, street food so you'll get good food everywhere in Jordan. Finally got to fulfill her dream of traveling to Jordan. Uh, I had really never heard of the country too much until I met Asia and she said, oh, I really want to go to Jordan, but I haven't been there. I think even you haven't dreamt about it for years, you couldn't have imagined the last five days going as smoothly and having as good a time as we did in the last five days. It was just amazing, really amazing. I agree. I think Jordan is a very unique country with some unique places to visit. Yes, I think it's um, not just fulfilled my dream, it's just I trust my expectations. Go to Jordan, we really would advise you to rent a car because it's the easiest way to get around and uh, it's not as big of a deal. Like the roads are quite fine, just maybe in the cities you need to be a little bit slower or more careful. If you don't drive a car, find a friend to go together because it just will make your traveling so much easier. Yeah, so when we were trying to book the car, we were having a little bit of problems. So we actually had to look into like taking taxis or maybe taking buses down the country. But in hindsight, when we got the problem sorted and we got, we were able to rent the car, when we were driving the car, we realized that that is the only way to do it properly because you're so free to go and do whatever you want. And you can, we only had four, four full days, but we got to do everything we wanted to do. And like, it was just so liberating to have the car. Whereas the tour buses don't get to places until 11, 12 o'clock in the morning. So the places are always, already really busy. Whereas we got up at like 6, 6.30 in the morning to go to these places um, to experience them pretty much by ourselves. So huge difference if you're going to Jordan, no matter what it costs, rent a car, it's definitely worth it. Uh, we are kind of just starting our channel of traveling the world outside of China. If you like this video, please uh, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing to our channel. We have a lot of more adventures to come, uh, more over Turkey and we're going to Ireland next week. And if you go to Jordan, we hope that you have something to remember, just like us.